it's Lisa from My Dreaming. So, welcome to my channel. Thanks so much for spending a little bit of time with me. Now, for this soap, ooh, I don't know if you remember, if you were around ooh, last year, was it the year before? Goodness me, everything goes so fast, doesn't it? I did my continents series. And one of the things I still get all the time is people requesting me to do other continents or other countries from continents. Obviously, I did do all of the continents. Now, I don't want to get back into the whole continents thing. I've done that series. It was a series that was done and all the soaps were sold off as sets and that. So I don't want to try and recreate it or anything. But one of the most common requests I get <laughs> is a request for from people to do a soap for Canada. Because remember at the time, my North America soap, I actually chose the USA. And a lot of people said, oh no, Canada's in, the, um, in North America. Can you do a Canada soap? So what I'm going to do is this soap is not hugely obviously Canada you know I'm not doing a Canadian flag and maple leaves and all of that sort of stuff because I don't want to try and get back into the whole continent thing but I googled um, things like what are the most famous things in Canada what are what are Canada's main animals and what are Canada, Canada's main sites and things like that and one of the things that came up with um, an animal that represents Canada, obviously we've got things like horses with the mounties and things like that, was beavers and beavers on dams. And I thought, oh, that'd be quite a nice idea. So that's what I'm gonna do. So this soap is gonna be sort of loosely, I guess, representing Canada. I got the idea from researching, you know, famous things or well-known things from Canada. And as I say, beavers came up. So I'm gonna make myself a beaver on a dam soap. So come on, let's go and make some soap. The first thing I want to do for my beaver dam soap is to make the dam. Now, I must admit, I thought about how I'm going to do this and I really want lots and lots and lots of sticks all in my dam because that's how a dam would be made. So I didn't want to just pour a dam. Now, I thought about doing it by using an extruder, but... The reason I decided not to extrude the sticks were, first of all, that's an awful lot to actually extrude. And I'm not going to be bothered to do it, to be honest, because that would be a lot of the soap to extrude. And secondly, when I use soap dough, I don't fragrance my soap dough. So that would be about a third of the soap that doesn't have fragrance in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour a block of soap and then I'm going to use a peeler like a vegetable peeler to shave off strips of it which hopefully from the side will look like little sticks. So what I've got here is just a couple of colours of mica dispersed in some oil. So this is just pure chestnut brown from Mica Mama. No, nope, sorry, it's chestnut brown from Pure Rock Colours, so Pure Rock Pearls. It used to be called You Make It Up. And this is a combination of golden shimmer from Mica Mama with a bit of that chestnut brown in as well. So it's sort of a more tanny type brown. So I'm just going to do two colours so I get a little bit of variation in my sticks. So I've just blended my oils and lye together and there is some sodium lactate in there as normal as well. I'm going to add my fragrance oil to my entire batch. This is a nice well behaved fragrance oil so I'm not worried about accelerating badly on me and the fragrance oil is called I'm not sure how well you can see that it's called happiest fragrance from Oasis oils now the reason I chose this is because you know sometimes when you do a scene it's sometimes fragrance oils seem obvious to use and others don't I didn't have any like I didn't have any beaver scent or anything as you can imagine and I chose this one because I find this is has a very fresh and it does to me have sort of like an outdoorsy type smell. So sort of fresh. I can always sort of smell sort of like riverside, slightly woodsy, but very fresh. That's a sort of fresh smell that I get from it. So I thought it would be great in this. So the name might be a bit weird for this soap, but certainly I think the fragrance of the oil is a good one. So I'm just going to give that a bit of a little bit of a blend in just to make sure I've dispersed it through. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm just going to get these colours mixed in. Now I'm not too worried about it being completely super exact. So I'm going to put about a third into my lighter colour. And then two thirds into my darker, just that pure chestnut brown. Okay, so that's pretty good, I think. As you can see, this is still quite a brown brown, although it's got the gold in it, but I used the chestnut brown to darken it a bit. And this is quite a dark brown here. So hopefully enough just to give me a little bit of difference. I don't want to go too light because I'm going to use some lighter goldy sort of colour to act as the mud to sort of join all the sticks together. So I want to see the difference in that as well. Okay, so let's grab my soap mould. Now, I quite often, if I do something like this, like when I make my tree trunks for my tree soaps and that sort of thing, I just use the mould that I'm going to make the actual soap in. Then you end up with an embed or whatever it is at the correct length. So, now I could stand this up on its side and use some sort of um, thing to tilt it over, but I'm just going to do it by hand. And I'm just going to I've just popped a little bit of the light onto the side there. want to add this in fact I might just pour them separately to be honest my what will hopefully be my sticks of wood then I'm going to chop up to actually make the sticks of wood in the main soap so I'm going to see pop this now if you've seen my videos in the past you might have seen that whenever I use this big nurture soap mold I don't see pop it as in put it in the oven because it just won't fit in my oven and also now because I'm in my studio, I don't want to be taking soaps back into the house and putting them in the oven. So what I've done is I've made my own little sea popping station. Let me go and grab it for you. Well, for me. <laughs> I bet you can't see that, can you? It's really far and close to the camera. It's a big black box. Okay, <laughs> let's try and get that so you could potentially you see it I've got a big polystyrene box now these come in all sorts of sizes and what I did is I took my molds I would typically use this mold but quite often I will make two soaps of the same size so I put these molds next to each other and measured them and I did the same with the other molds that I use in combination and obviously where I've got molds that are smaller I didn't bother measuring them but for example I've got like a slab mold and things like that and I wanted it to be a box that one size fits all but without being too huge so I've got my box as small as I can that will fit the soap molds that I need to into it And then what I've also done, 
What I've also got is I've got, this is like a pet heating pad and it's thermostatically controlled and it's got a timer on it and everything. So I've just dropped that into my box and then I've just cut out a bit of other polystyrene from another polystyrene box I had and I've just sort of made a little shelf as it were. Now the reason I did that is because I wanted to sort of take up as much room in this box as I could so there wasn't too much space. So that is what I'm going to use. Now I haven't actually used it yet so what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to pop my soap in it, in it and I'm going to keep an eye on what the temperature is when I put the lid back on. Now it's a fairly warm day anyway and the soap itself may generate some heat but to be honest this soap that I've just done is only very small so it possibly won't give me much heat. But yep, yeah, I'm going to pop that in my little heat box there. So you can see I've got my soap there in my little seat pop box. I could get another mould in there that would be perfect. I'm going to pop my lid on to that and then turn on my heating mat, keep an eye on the temperature and that will be my first test of my little C-pop box. Okay so here's my soap dough that I've mottled together and hopefully you can see it's sort of like a slightly mottled effect to it. Now I know it's quite a light colour but beavers often look really quite dark because we always see them wet um, and they tend to be a little bit of a lighter colour when they're not wet. So my one, especially the one on my dam, isn't going to be wet. What I've also done is taken a bit of black soap dough and I've just attached it to the side. And the idea being that I'm hoping that when I line up my extruder disc, I'll get more black in the area of the tail because they do tend to be a darker colour on the tail. It may or may not work. I'm just going to go off and extrude this and I'll come back when I've done it. So I've extruded that out and I hopefully, can you see that? I think it seems to have worked okay because I've definitely got the black in the tail area. Some of it extends into the back of the beaver, but that's fine. I've been through and extruded my second beaver, the one that's going to be swimming. And I've also, it's a rather scruffy extrusion, extruded a stick that I want. Now, the reason this is a little bit scruffy is because what I've done is, if do you remember that block of soap I've made to make the dam out of? What I've done is I've just scraped off some bits of soap of that, mushed it up into some soap dough, um, and it was quite, by the time I'd got it all together and got all the lumps and bumps out, it was quite soft. But that's okay, I want it the same colour as the sticks in the dam. And what I'm going to now do is take this stick, and I want my beaver to be holding the stick and gnawing it. So what I'm going to do is join them together. In here I've just got some distilled water with a bit of golden shimmer mica in it. Just because I want there to be, you know, a clear sort of little line. Because I'm joining brown to brown, but hopefully the different shades will show up enough. So the distilled water to help them stick together nicely and then just that little touch of the golden shimmer mica to hopefully help differentiate those colours a little. Now I often get asked about these little pictures I have in my moulds, I'm not sure if you can see them where. I always design my um, soaps, I use um, Illustrator Pro and I draw the, sorry, Adobe Illustrator and I draw the pictures in there. But it doesn't matter what you use, you, even if you just do it on a piece of paper and I sometimes do that. I then just print them out onto clear acetate and I cover the other side in sticky tape and then I just use some water to stick them to the side of my mould and that works really well. And the good advantage with doing that is I can then, I don't throw them away afterwards, I just wash them and then I can reuse them any time I make this soap. So that's what I've just done there. If you did paper ones, then again, they will just peel off your soap at the end, but you're going to end up throwing them away. But that's not a problem. So even if you drew a design by hand, it just helps you make sure you get your embeds in the right place. Okay.
Now it's starting to thicken a little bit, which is good. So I'm just going to take my little beaver that should be swimming in the water and just pop that one in there. So while our water is setting up, do you remember this block that we made? My sort of woody looking soap. So this is it unmolded. I did, as I said earlier, scrape a little bit off there to make the stick that the beaver's gnawing on. And what I want to do is I want to take this and I'm just going to slice it into thin bits to make sticks for the dam. So I've got a couple of things, just a couple of like cheese slices. I've got this one. And I've also got this one. They're just cheese slices I got from Amazon. This one's quite good. It's got a little metal wire on, a bit like your soap cutter, and this roller. And you can alter it to all different thicknesses. So I'm not going to be too fussy about these. I'm just going to slice off some pieces. I got these because I use them, you know, if I make soap curls and things. And then I'm just going to slice them off. And I'm just going to keep them wrapped so they stick. You can see we've got some nice colour differences. And I want them sort of different thicknesses and different shapes. So I'm not trying to be too perfect with them. Okay, here we are the next day so let's get our soap cut shall we go it's ever so hot here in the UK now I know you lot or probably quite a few of you are used to really hot temperatures we're not really in the UK and it's 41 degrees today so over 100 degrees <laughs> probably some of you go yeah we have that all the time I think the problem with us in the UK is because we don't ever have temperatures like that we end up with you know we've got no air conditioning in our houses because we, we just never need it so we're really not set out for dealing with these sort of temperatures so yes it is quite a challenging temperature for us so let's get this cut Have a look to see what we've got. Even the 
this soap still feels warm just I think from the ambient heat so let's have a look and there we are oh we've got a couple of little holes I, I'm not surprised about that but our little beaver on our dam little wood bits have come out quite well the beaver I think looks a little bit funny with the stick in his face but hopefully we can kind of see what's supposed to be going on there so let's have a look at a couple more of those yes yeah, can you see right in the middle there I've got some tiny weeny little holes there which are going to be very easy to fill and they're sort of starting to disappear as we're going through okay so those are our little beavers in our boiling hot weather <laughs> okay I'll get the rest cut off camera because I'm sure they're all going to look pretty similar to what we've got there And just to finish off, here are a couple of pictures of the final soap. I hope you like this soap and you've enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I do really appreciate your time. If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, why not subscribe to my channel? I hope you have a good rest of your day. Happy soaping!